color. It's all around us. Whether it's the conglomeration of greens and purples of the northern lights, or the different shades of red your face turns when you see your crush, color is all around us. One of the coolest things about chemistry is the unique ways it creates color. In some ways, it's like magic. But in others, it's a lot more intuitive than you might think. I'm going to demonstrate that with a reaction you've probably never seen before, involving a few interesting chemicals. Here, I've got three different beakers with three solutions. In the beaker on the left, I'm going to add a few drops of sulfuric acid. And you can see a white precipitate form. In the beaker on the right, I'm gonna add a few drops of copper sulfate. And you can see a nice blue precipitate forms. Now this white precipitate is actually a radiographic contrast agent, meaning it's used to enhance CT scans since it shows up better under x-rays. So to become x-ray proof, I drank some of it. This blue precipitate has historically been used as a fungicide, so I rubbed some of it on my feet to cure my foot fungus. Now in this middle beaker, I'm going to create a third solution that will contain a mixture of the two precipitates formed in these other two beakers. If you understand color wheels, since I would be combining a white solid with a blue solid, you might expect that I would get a light blue precipitate. In fact, you would be correct. What happened here is that in the leftmost beaker, I started with a solution of barium hydroxide containing barium 2 plus ions and then added sulfuric acid, which contains the sulfate ion. Together, they formed the insoluble barium sulfate compound, which is a white solid. On the right, I started with sodium hydroxide and added copper sulfate, which forms the blue copper hydroxide precipitate. In the middle, I did kind of a mixture of the two. I started with barium hydroxide and then added copper sulfate. So I created both barium sulfate and copper hydroxide. Therefore, the color of the resulting solid mixture in this middle beaker is an intermediate of the colors of the individual precipitates from these other two beakers. Here's a different video of me doing the same thing where the precipitates are just a bit easier to see. It's just like mixing paint. When I mix blue paint with white paint, I get light blue paint. In the same way, when I mix blue copper hydroxide with white barium sulfate, I get a light blue mixture of the two compounds. But the paint analogy isn't 100% correct. With paint, I can add more blue to make it a darker blue or more white to make it a lighter blue. But with precipitates, the color isn't adjustable. I can't add more barium hydroxide to this middle beaker to make the solid a lighter blue, nor can I add more copper sulfate to make it a darker blue. The color of this solid mixture is a lot like Tesla's car design. No matter what you do, it will always be the same. Why? Well, this is because both precipitates are formed in constant proportions. In this case, equal proportions. For example, if I combine one mole of barium hydroxide with one mole of copper sulfate, I get one mole of barium sulfate and one mole of copper hydroxide. If I then add, say, 0.5 moles more barium hydroxide, I'll still have the same amount of the two products because there won't be enough copper sulfate to react with the added barium hydroxide. The extra 0.5 moles of barium hydroxide will be dissolved in solution and won't contribute to the color of the solid. In other words, there will always be too little of one reactant, which will prevent any further precipitation from occurring. This means the mole ratio of blue copper hydroxide to white barium sulfate will always be one to one, meaning that the solid mixture will always have the same color, never a darker or lighter shade blue than the shade you're seeing here. 
Interesting, right? Well, I haven't even shown you the coolest part. If I leave these solutions out for a few hours, this happens. The left solid stays white, the middle one turns light gray, and the right one turns black. Remember, I've done nothing to these solutions except let them sit there on my desk. So, what happened? Well, there's something special about copper hydroxide. It really doesn't like to exist. It's what we call a metastable compound, meaning that under normal circumstances and conditions, it can exist for a reasonable amount of time, enough that we can see it exist, but not forever. Copper hydroxide spontaneously decomposes into water and copper oxide, which is a black compound. That's why the precipitate on the right turned black, and the precipitate in the middle turned sort of a weird bluish gray. The white barium sulfate was mixed with the black copper oxide, which gave it a gray color. With enough time, the two beakers ended up looking like this. As a side note, the reason that the solutions in these two beakers were so cloudy to begin with was that barium hydroxide doesn't dissolve very well in water. It is technically soluble, but only at a rate of a few grams per 100 milliliters, so it does take quite a bit of patience to dissolve it. Here's some footage of me trying to dissolve the barium hydroxide by heating and stirring. And you can see that it really doesn't like to dissolve. 